we'll get started in just a minute or so. Excuse me, I'm tired this morning. Okay, let's get started. Where are we? Oh, yes, it's 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, uh, oh, my webcam is not working. What? <laughs> I am here, but my webcam is not working. Oh, what's going on? It's me. Hello. There we go. Oh, I do look a bit rough this morning. Sorry. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay. Uh, well, this is going to be an interesting experiment. I haven't, I haven't actually had time to prepare. I've been a little ill, but uh, we'll see how we get on with today's broadcast. Uh, so I'm John Stevenson. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is practically. Uh, we're going to do some Code Wars from scratch because I haven't had a chance to look at any of these events. Um, we were uh, we had a very uh, excellent. Um, uh, oops, sorry, my brain's gone. Uh, yeah, we had an excellent event uh, of the weekend for uh, Explosion Bridge London. We had uh, uh, 30 people signing up, students signing up for that, and uh, uh, yeah, it was great. We spent the whole day Saturday learning and um, taught people how to build a tic-tac-toe game inside a web browser which was great and there's lots of other things going on there as well some people using um, Arcadia and Unity to try and uh, build some 3D games in Clojure as well uh, okay where are all the buttons there we go oh yeah so we're gonna have a look at Code Wars you need to get in touch with me then it's practically websites and there's contact details uh, here um, uh, using the closure in Slack community and there's a sign up there uh, if you need to get in touch. Uh, so let's have a look at the first Code Wars challenge. I'll put this into the uh, chat as well. So the messy goals function is the first link in the chat you should see. <coughs> and this looks fairly simple if I'm reading it right, which is good. I need a simple one to start with, I think. Um, so, Messi is a soccer player. Um, okay, I don't watch soccer, but uh, interesting. But uh, I, I am aware of the concept of a, a football game. Uh, soccer, I wonder if, uh, yeah. Um, uh, so, it's playing in three different leagues. Uh, so we need to write a function to total the number of goals in all three leagues. That seems suspiciously easy. <laughs> um, there we go, so let's have a look. Uh, 
So we've got uh, tests and we've got a code. So I'm just going to create a project for this, uh, just so I can put it up onto GitHub. I'm going to go into my editor, and that's my editor, my command line. Uh, and I've got in my, oops, in my closure, uh, slash dot, uh, no closure, depths dot in. Sorry, in the in the root of my account, I have a file called depths.eden, um, and it's got uh, things like well, it has a lot of um, aliases, but uh, the one we're going to use today is this uh, closure CLJ new, uh, which is going to create projects. So this is what I've been using for all the projects in uh, Code Wars. And this just uses a template, it's just like lining in and boot if you're familiar with those. Chris template, uh, and we can just use the uh, call this alias when we're using closure, give it a template name, and then uh, kind of a recommendation for naming projects is some kind of domain, and the namespace is the uh, name of the project you want to do. Uh, so that creates a main project file uh, rather than creating a, uh, a a core.clj file, which um, has been quite common uh, up until now. Um, and the domain is uh, either your company you're working for or, um, or your GitHub account or some kind of uh, umbrella name that you put uh, all these projects under. So I use, uh, I use Practically for that. And, uh, okay, so this means I can then just do closure uh, minus a, uh, and then new, and uh, I can choose the, here I've chosen the uh, lib uh, template, because uh, I don't need to, I'm not going to run this on the command line, uh, if I did, I'd use the app template, and uh, the domain is uh, practically, and this is one I created previously, so I'm going to call this the same name as the As it, the um, code was thing, so it's messy goals function. Messy with an I. There we go. Boom. And that should create me brand new projects. Oh, I haven't put it in the right place, but there we go. So this has created a messy goals project here. I'm just going to move that actually because I want that to go into. Uh, in with the, all the other um, Code Wars things, which I think is in Closure Code Wars. Yeah, there we go. Code Wars guys. So I'll put it in there. Uh, yes. Uh, and then it's in with all the other ones. Um, Oh yes, my command line knows that there's some changes to uh, commit to GitHub at some point. So let's go and open that in my editor. Uh, code rules is number five. So I'm just using some layers on uh, some layouts in Closure in Emacs. Uh, buffer, get rid of that. Cool. Um, and I'm just going to open the project. Let's go up a level. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, one more. And then it's messy. There it is. Messy. <clears throat> so this created a project. In the depths Eden, it's got uh, it's got the paths so of where my source code is. It's got closure. I'm using the latest version of closure 1.10.1. And we've got aliases of a test uh, to define our test, a runner that will run our tests on the command line. And uh, we've got uh, a jar and an install and a deploy. But we're not going to use any of those at the moment. Those if you want to package up and uh, distribute your project. That's how other people can use them. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is just add, so we've got test, the test path 
in this alias, but I want to uh, be able to call tests without having to use the alias. So I'm just going to put test in there. That just means I can run the tests within CIDR, within my editor, uh, without having to specify the alias, because I'd have to add another file to do that. Uh, so I'll do that for now, and then open this uh, source code. Uh, I spelled practically wrong, haven't I? <coughs> oh, I shall fix that uh, later on. <laughs> I'll fix it up. Oh dear, this could be a, a messy, uh, a messy broadcast. <laughs> oh. And then, so this is the source code for that is created by default. I'm going to delete some of this because I don't need it. So I don't need the. Um, I don't need this def foo function, so I'm going to get rid of that for now. So we just need the namespace and then uh, the one function that we want to get from Code Wars, which is this uh, uh, defin. Uh, so I'm going to select that just so we've got the, the right, so this is basically just the function signature. <coughs> uh, but, uh, let's put that on there. there we go. So it's just a function with uh, one, two, three, uh, yeah, with three arguments. I'm just going to put them on each, each on their own line because then it's easier to see that there's three of them. Uh, there we go. And it wants me to put my code in there. Okay. And then I'm going to switch to the tests. This is just piece. Uh, oh, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't know where they are yet. Uh, so you switch it over to the tests. Boom. Boom. Which is in the test section. Practically, you've spelled that wrong again. <laughs> At least it's consistent. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> oh yeah, because it's uh, it's not spelled correctly up there either. But there we go. Uh, and I don't want the test that comes with the uh, lib template, so I can delete that. And then go back to. Uh, Oh, sorry, to go back to there. I can copy in the. Uh, I'm just going to copy the tests themselves. I'm not going to copy the namespace because that's going to be slightly different because I'm going to be including something other than categories. Uh, so I can copy that. I've got four people on. Excellent. Uh, again, sorry for the short notice about this. I'm still a bit ill but uh, hopefully I'll last long enough to show you something interesting today. So we've got a couple of tests, so this is testing, I'm just going to reformat this a little bit, just make it easier for me, for me to read. So if you haven't done unit tests in Clojure it's fairly simple, so you write a def test and the idea of this is it's going to test a particular function, but you can test different aspects of that function, yes pussy get. You can test different aspects of the function uh, and you can uh, have multiple assertions. So the is is like an assertion. So this is the actual specific test that we're making. So we want to see that if we call goals with three arguments, then we get a specific result. So here they've used testing to group uh, uh, rather strangely. Uh, yeah, I think I don't think you need uh, separate testings in this, but uh, for this, for example, that they should they've created two sections in the test, each with their own assertions. So um, uh, when if these tests fail, then <clears throat> the uh, this string is printed out to help you sh top show which grouping of assertions is actually passed. You don't actually have to use the testing. Um, uh, section you can just use assertions, but if you have multiple uh, is assertions, then it's useful to kind of group them up into logically what they're trying to do. Uh, and it doesn't know what goals is. Uh, I tend to not like refer all, so I, I'm going to change that to not show you some 
uh, less than good habits and so I, I specifically include uh, the def test the sort of functions we're going to use uh, so we're testing and is <clears throat> there's also an uh, oops there's also R as well which is quite uh, useful but we're not using that in this example and the same thing for this Rather than refer all, I'm going to uh, refer goals. So that's the function we want to use from our main source. So this is our main um, source code that we're testing, and we're just going to pull in the uh, the goals function, uh, so we can call it. Here are the other approach is to is to to actually use as instead of. Uh, and software under test is quite a common approach. I think it's what I've used for the other Code Wars challenges, so I'm going to keep on using that. The advantage of using an edit in this sense is that it highlights which of the functions that are actually from the uh, software that you're trying to test. So actually, I, I think this for me this makes the test very very quick to read because you can very easily see which functions you're actually testing. Oops. Especially with the uh, highlighting, syntax highlighting as well. <clears throat> Alright, uh, so I don't believe I'm running a REPL yet, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to run a REPL. So all this code should run. I mean, it doesn't do anything. Uh, we get this to return uh, zero if we wanted to. So if we just want to, so uh, enclosure a function will just return the, the the value of the last expression, and we can just put o or a number in as a last expression. We might want to put um, uh, we might put minus one to kind of show that it's purposely an error. Um, Otherwise, this would return nil again, and that's that's perfectly fine as well. Um, nil is a is a valid value in closure. Actually, in fact, nil might be better. Let's put nil in there. There we go. Uh, <coughs> so as long as you call goals with three uh, arguments, then it'll return nil, and so the code will work. It's just not going to do what you want it to do yet. Did I start the REPL? No, I did not. Uh, let's start the REPL. So I'm just starting the closure REPL from my editor and we're using the closure CLI tool, so that was quick. Whoa. Uh, it's faster than my brain today. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what, what's up, cat? If you can hear my cat in the background, I apologise, but. Uh, he seems to want to uh, join in, but he's not giving me any clues today. Um, okay, so we've run the REPL. Let's evaluate uh, the function. So, okay, so the REPL knows about this function. Well, kitty, yes, I feel the same way. There we go. Evaluate the. Oh, I've got something wrong in the namespace. What have I, ooh, what have I done? I've got an error. Uh, oh, it did not conform. What have I done? I've done something silly, haven't I? Oh, why is that not on there? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, my uh, my editing. I've done something when I edited uh, this incorrectly. So it's um, so this is an error message from Closure, <coughs> and it's doing a. Uh, it's kind of giving me uh, uh, it, all the functions. A lot of the functions now have a specification using closure spec, and so it's going to check to see whether uh, the, any particular expression conforms to that specification. So there's a spe specific specification for the NS expression, which is what it's fading on at the moment, and it's saying, "Yeah, call to closure core NS did not conform to the spec." And it's given me a reason that uh, we've got some extra input. And um, 
so it's uh, yeah yeah and and it's kind of around this so this is the require um, is it gonna give me yeah so it's giving me a bit of a clue uh, so we the error messages are getting better in uh, closure and it's given me enough of a clue to I realize what I what I've done uh, so I've got the require and uh, there's this uh, vector which holds all the requires except it doesn't <laughs> there's one, one of them has escaped I must have done some uh, structural editing and bath this one up when I wasn't looking so let's <coughs> let's cut that in I could just slurp that in I suppose uh, and so this one wants to go in there there we go uh, it also wasn't lined up, so that also gave me a clue because the uh, the P was started underneath the bracket. So that also gave me a nice visual clue that it wasn't in the right place. And so we can just do Q to get rid of that. Oops, there we go. <coughs> so if I fix that, then oh, what's 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 going on? Have I done something else that's wrong? What have I done? Oh. Oh, no, but, oh, no, what am I doing? No, it is kind of wrong. No, no, <laughs> oh, dear, sorry. My brain is very uh, broken today. Uh, so there we go, because they all want to be in their own. Uh, cool. I don't know what I've done actually in there. Uh, <coughs> uh, so what do you uh, uh, wrap this? So I guess around with boop. Uh, there we go. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. Oops. <clears throat> yeah, so we want to have multiple uh, vectors in there. Uh, there we go. So it uh, so it evaluates. I got my uh, syntax right. We. Uh, and I've just evaluated the def test as well, so we can run those. So if I just run the test suite from my editor, uh, which is uh, comma t, I'm just going to run them all, a for all. Do I want to save the file? Yes, I do. And with expected, it's got two failures. That's what uh, I would expect to think <laughs> to give, because what it's doing is returning goals is returning nil. Uh, so we're returning nil rather than zero. So uh, we know that our tests are failing, so they're actually working correctly because we're not getting the right answer. So we just need to make the pass though. Yay. Okie dokie. Hopefully this is a easy bit next. Right, so now we need to work on our code and do something other than nil to do that. So let's have a look at the challenge again. Remind myself what I'm just trying to do. Uh, okay, so I just want to add up. Oh, well, this seems easy. If I look at the test, I mean, we just have three number, three numbers, and we just add them up. Is is that all? That seems that seems suspiciously easy. <coughs> Maybe I'm being overly paranoid. Uh, so, uh, well, if we want to add things up, then we just use the plus uh, function. And then we can give this, because it's multiple arity, we can give this as many arguments as we want. Plus, we'll just add up all the individual arguments. Uh, so we do la liga. Oh, yeah, there we go. So it's because the, cause the arguments are there, it's, it's going to auto-complete them for me as well. So I have to type them all in, which is nice. <coughs> uh, so if I save that uh, and evaluate it, then it goes into the REPL. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if I go run the tests again, but well, oh, they all pass. Well, that's pretty easy. I don't see why that's a six. I'm, I'm 
kind of wondering if there's some kind of catch that they haven't told me about when I run tests. So if that's what it is, then, uh, well, that's going to be a nice easy one to start with. At least we've got one done. So I'm going to copy that expression uh, and then I'm just going to paste it back into Code Wars. Oops, so I'm going to press the right button. So my code here. Uh, now I'm just going to paste that in uh, there. We go. <coughs> Let's run the sample tests. Well, they all pass. This is looking suspiciously easy, but it's, it's usually something if there's going to oh no, that all works as well. So, there's 102 uh, things because sometimes they hide things in the actual full range of test suites that they don't show you because they only show you. Uh, these are the sample tests, and there's so this is just one test, but they've actually got uh, 102 tests in there. So I was expecting one of those to trip up, uh, but it didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> well, that's uh, that's a very easy one. I have no. That's definitely not. A, that's a, like an 8KU KYU run uh, level six. Uh, we have a quick look at the other uh, approaches. Uh, yeah, so this is what all they've just done here is just change the uh, argument names. Uh, reducing, uh, using reduce of arcs. Oh, okay, right, yes. So if there's multiple leaks, so this makes this more, um, makes the, the function signature uh, more flexible because any number if if there was suddenly another league uh, added or a league taken away uh, or a league name changed and so on then uh, that could potentially break the uh, the signature uh, of the function Oops, wrong one. There we go. Uh, yeah so if we if we wanted to calculate goals and what if one of these leagues disappeared so we can't call goals with two with two values uh, because you get an error it's the wrong arity so we get this uh, closure line arity exception because we we haven't given it enough uh, valuable uh, valuables very uh, enough arguments uh, so if we if we instead uh, use uh, goals, so if you set goals, oh, actually I'll just define a new one, let's not be lazy. Uh, let's use, let's use that, there we go. A little snippet template, uh, so we'll do goals, variable, So instead of just putting uh, uh, league league one, league two, league three, league four, and, and then changing this every time the number of leagues change, if we have uh, leagues uh, as a as our argument name, but if we use the ampersand, then rather than being a single uh, argument that we're passing, it now becomes a collection of all the arguments that we've passed. <clears throat> so we'd have all of the leaks. So if we call um, goals variable now, uh, then it will it will it won't do anything, but it will actually evaluate uh, correctly. Uh, evaluate that. So we can call goals uh, goals variable. Oh, goals variable. There we are. With we can call it with a single. Uh, value uh, and so yeah here by default it's returning nil they're always they're all going to return nil at the moment because I don't actually have a body uh, but we can call it with as many numbers of uh, league goals as we want to so we need to do is actually just get it to add up all these numbers that we're passing and uh, we can't do uh, just plus 
uh, leagues uh, because plus doesn't work on a collection type. Uh, so if we actually did, uh, uh, we replace that with, uh, uh, we call this. <coughs> So it's actually returned leagues is actually uh, a type of uh, of collection. It's, in this case, it's uh, specifically an, an array, an array sequence. So it's basically a sequence of uh, values. Uh, it's, uh, and if we look at uh, and when we use plus, then it's actually it has to take uh, specific. Numbers, so we can add up uh, individual numbers, but we can't add up if we do add uh, plus. Uh, do. Then uh, we got a class class exception because it can't add up a vector. Uh, so, uh, the plus function doesn't take a vector as an argument. what it does take yeah so if we look at the signature down the bottom here oops oh, it's gone. There we go. uh, so it's it shows that it, it takes a single value or multiple values or m like any number of values uh, or no values uh, oops. Yeah, so we can call plus by itself but we can't so we can call it by individual numbers, but we just can't use any collections with it directly. So we have to use uh, something that will use the uh, function over the collection. So it's usually it's like map, reduce, apply, those kind of things. So we want, and we want to create a, uh, we want to add all the numbers together. So that suggests we want to reduce so we want to reduce all the numbers down to a single number, just like you reduce your uh, your broth down to a nice thick soup. I think that's one of the analogies. Uh, there we go. Space there. Yeah, and so what it's doing is it's take it reduces going to take each of these numbers in turn and pass them to plus, and then reduce down the uh, the total. To a single value, and we get the result there. So if we do all the leagues here, if we type this to uh, reduce plus, Then we can call this and it should give us the answer. There we go. <laughs> we can have as many leagues as we want to. There we go. And it adds up all the goes. So we don't have to worry about if leagues come and go. We are, uh, we've made our function more resilient to, uh, to change and, and more flexible as well, more generic. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a better title as well. I'll probably change that to uh, <coughs> League. Uh, uh, there we go. <coughs> Something more uh, descriptive there. Whoop. Evaluate it that it puts it into the uh, auto complete for me. Oops. Yep, still works. There we go. Um, okay, I think that's enough for that challenge. All right, any other questions? No. Uh, okay. Uh, there's nothing else in there. I can't imagine there's anything else that's more uh, interesting in that way. Let's have a look at the next one. I think the next one is a bit more challenging. So we may or may not solve this one. <coughs> oh, sorry, I was
problems with my stomach. I hope, uh, hope you can't hear that. Oh dear. Uh, uh, okay, so let's create another project. Uh, so this is called Disease Spread. Let's see if I can type my name here properly. Uh, we're in the right location. Disease spread project. Let's have a look at that. Two, uh, three. Uh, uh, let's open the project files. Uh, it's going to do the same thing for the depths of Eden. Just add test in here. source file. <coughs> Get rid of that. There we go. There we go. Good. Uh, <coughs> now then, um, up the test file. Also, the advantage of doing this in your editor is it's a lot easier to see the tests, and you can also add your own tests in here as well, which I've done on a few occasions. That's much easier to read. There we go. Uh, so we've got uh, an assertion. So I'll be doing some maths here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so these are all our tests here. Um, so we're calling epidemic with a range of numbers and we get a number and return so we have to work out what the formula what the calculation is that uh, gives us the right answer <coughs> so let's go back to uh, code wars Uh, we just got epidemic here. Uh, so what does that mean? We, uh, let's put that into here as well. There we go. So we've got some rather cryptic uh, arguments for some rather cryptic numbers. Okay, this could be uh, the first challenge is to try and understand what the problem is. If anybody has any clues, then feel free to include that in the chat. So, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> so we've got influenza breakout, uh, which is quite on topic at the moment. With uh, I think a lot of people are getting uh, flu symptoms at the moment. Uh, we've got a thousand students. The outbreak began with one infected student. Uh, we want to study the spread of the disease. <coughs> we divide the population into those who have been infected. So that's the I, I guess, of the uh, argument. Those who have recovered, uh, oh, there's no R, okay. Uh, those who are still susceptible, 
So I guess it's S. <coughs> <coughs> doing a, a cataract disease spread. Uh, I think the cats are safe from my spreading of the disease. Uh, so okay so we're still the disease period over TM days. So this is time. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to change these uh, to uh, uh, let's create this again. Uh, put, put, put. So that's our original signature. Uh, let's do. Yeah, epidemic. Uh, and we've got time. Whatever n is. Uh, we've got the set uh, all uh, people. Get the infected. Uh, whatever b and a is. <coughs> So the model of propagation, so how the disease spreads, we've got three different equations. Okay. So do we have to kind of add these together? Let's see. Okay. <coughs> Let's just put this down here. I'll just comment it all out for now. <coughs> oh. Ooh, there we go. Uh, Okay, so we've got the susceptibles, the infected and the recovered. Uh, so if we times whatever B is by it's the susceptible by the infected and minus B, we get the, suscept uh, the new value for the susceptible people. Uh, okay, so we then have to feed that back in, I guess, to other equations uh, then if we get oh yeah because we need to oh okay right so we've got we need to find s uh, uh, s quote and i quote and i quote um, uh, okay here we go uh, and then b and a are constants so okay, constant watts B is the number of contacts uh, which can spread the disease and A is a fraction of the infected that will recover. Okay, so we've got some susceptibles that will get, uh, will become infected uh, and A is what will recover. So I guess we have to combine several of these equations to, uh, to do that. <coughs> oh, we can transfer all the equations one, two, and three in finite differences. What does that mean? Here's where my maths is going to fail me badly. Oh, here we go. What's this? Hmm. Where 
get number from? I'm not sure I'm getting this one at the moment. Oh, but pre graph. There we go. Uh, no. Uh, oof. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go away and think about this one because I'm just not in a <clears throat> mathematical state of mind at the moment. Uh, if you have any suggestions about what you're doing, but there's some com combination of all these functions that we need to do. Uh, there's a bit of background, oh, there's a bit of background stuff to go through here as well. So this is not a simple one uh, by any means. So there's a big, big gulf of difference between the one we've just done and this one. <coughs> I think I need to go away and solve the maths, otherwise I'm just poking around trying to uh, figure out what it all means, uh, which is not going to be very interesting, I don't think. Uh, yeah, so we'll come back to that one if I figure out what's going on. Uh, and why is this not working? Oh, there we go. <coughs> What's this one doing? Um, so we've got the equation of a surface. Take the cross section of S. Plane Z equals K. Call this cross section. Yes, I know it's more maths, kitty. Huh. start doing this. I don't know where we put it out. Oh, we got one pass. <laughs> we got a test passed. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think I added uh, KKK to this just uh, before we started. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I think this is something else I'm going to have to have a go and think about. Because uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling 100% at the moment today. I apologise for that. Um, rather waste your time. I'm going to call it uh, quits on this one and uh, and broadcast when I'm feeling better and hopefully more cognizant and able to use my brain. But thank you very much for listening to this one. I hope you got something from it. Um, and uh, I'll push the one thing that we did do and uh, have a think about these other ones again as well oh okay i'm gonna have to go because I, I my stomach is causing uh problems but thank you again for for joining me uh i'll hopefully do a more interesting broadcast next week um and uh see you all then thank you very much bye bye